Good evening and welcome back to Byline. It's September, school is open, the students are back on the college campuses, and we're back here in the studio uh, creating some new programming. Uh, this is our uh, public affairs show, uh, co-sponsored by the uh, Amherst Media and our local chapter of the League of Women Voters. And we've been over the last eight months helping our friends and neighbors understand what you, our new town councilors, are doing uh, to stand up our new town government. And uh, so our guest tonight is the president of the town council, Lynn Griesmer. And we decided we were going to use the first half of the show to tell you uh, sort of in, in quick uh, succession what happened over the last and first eight months of our new town government, and then what you can look forward to is what we'll be focused on in the second half, because we still have another four months or so to go through uh, and in order to complete our first year of our new government. So, Lynn, welcome. And let's start at the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. <laughs> Are you going to sing that? I'm not going to sing <laughs> okay. the rest of it. I'll let the listeners sing it in their minds. Good. Well, we've had a very successful start. Uh, we started out with what you would call a lot of process, making sure that we had the right organization to start with, which included our major five committees, uh, finance committee, which is dictated by the charter. The other one dictated by the charter is the audit committee. And um, is an, it is not as active in that it doesn't have to meet as often, but it's very important. Uh, the three others that we created to help facil facilitate our work of the council are the organization, um, and <laughs> I'll get it out. It's really hard I'll to get, get the names of these committees. I, I just want to go by their... Um, Do the acronym. Acronyms, yeah. GOL. GOL. Governance, Organization, and Legislation. There you go. OCA, Outreach, Communication, and Appointments, and CRC, Community Resources Committee. Right. And so those total five committees are committees of the council, uh, there is one, the Finance Committee, that by um, statute, again by the Charter, yeah. allows resident members, if we so choose, and we did, and we have now appointed three resident members, right. and they've been actively jumped right in. Uh, two of them come with experience from Finance Committee, another is a new person to, you know, work in town government, if you will. Yeah. And then in addition to that, we had to do a lot of other kinds of things, mostly charged by the created by the charter, okay? Uh, one of them is bylaw review, and we're still in the process of that. We've already adopted the changes for the zoning bylaws, uh, but we still have the general bylaws to do, and we need to do that before December 1st. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is Joint Capital Planning Committee, and that is one that includes the library and the schools as well as the town council. And that has both the small capital projects and obviously has consultative and important input into the large capital mm -hmm. projects because libraries and school constitute some of that. And that's a carryover from our former town it form is. of government, as is Finance Committee, except under this Finance Committee, the Charter said you could and you did right. appoint citizen right. resident members to that committee right. to participate in addition to the electeds. Right. And remember, the last finance committee was a committee of town count, of the town meeting. Meeting, right. So it was all residents. Yeah. Nobody was on this from the select board, just all yeah. residents. Mm -hmm. So uh, the budget coordinating group, uh, the participatory budgeting group, a commission, and then finally, and this is a very important one, rules of procedure. And the charter again dictated that we need to have all of that in place, permanent rules. We can change them, mm -hmm. but a set of permanent rules of procedure. And we had to have all that in place by June 3rd, mm -hmm. and we did. So, and, and the, But the participatory budget committee, yeah. that was uh, dictated by the charter yes, it was. to study the idea of involving the citizenry in making some of the allocations. Yes. 
I in an annual budget right. from a set aside done presumably by the town council. Right. And so that was a study effort at this point because that's not up and running. It's a study effort. They need to then come back with a recommendation to the council. Okay. And so we didn't use that process in this past budget cycle because we were already in into the future. it. Yes. Absolutely. And there's also the one that's studying ranked choice voting. That ranked choice voting is another one and that's running into some interesting issues in that the state legislature is actually looking at ranked choice voting. So okay. rather than have 351 different cities and towns Having with their 351 51 different, different models, approaches okay. to ranked choice voting, okay. there is now a question as to whether or not there might be a state effort on this. And if there is, then that will actually take a piece of that out of the hands of the okay. town itself. Well, what that would do is create an enabling statute, presumably, right. which would say any city or town may choose to do this. Right. And if you choose to do it, these are the parameters so that there's yep. consistency across the Commonwealth. Exactly. Okay. And then whatever we adopt would have to be in line with those requirements. And to the best of your knowledge, are they just looking at it from the municipal perspective or also for st uh, the state legislature and statewide elections? We've mostly been focused on just the municipal. You have. We have. But is the state folk? Don't you know don't know that. that. Okay. I do know there's a lot of statewide efforts and there have been yeah. a lot of meetings statewide, okay. many of which involve people from But Amherst. at minimum, they're looking at the question of how to um, make this pretty consistent across the state right. if a community decides to do it. Correct. And so it makes sense to wait and see what they come up with rather than do a totally separate effort. It's going to be a juggling act back yeah. and forth because yeah. obviously we had to form that committee within our first year. Because of the we, charter. Because of the charter mm -hmm. and they're actively now working. Okay, good. So it's a very good committee. Great. As you might imagine when you yep. appoint committees in Amherst you can get some serious talent. You certainly and, can. And uh, so forth. And so, and then in addition to that we've had some ad hoc committees and one of them is initial one was we have this very complicated regional budgeting system for our schools and so one of our members was on the four towns meeting yeah. uh, for the school budget for the regional school budget which is the uh, if you will 7 to 12 grades and then uh, the energy and climate action was started out as an ad hoc committee and now has become a committee that the council created mm -hmm. and in a very unusual way includes two councillors but also includes a lot more residents mm -hmm. on that one. So that's going to be resident driven. Yes. Uh, but the actions or the, the actions that they want to recommend and propose yep. will come before the town council. Right. They certainly will. Yep. And one of the things we're very, very clear about is they need to be extremely well vetted with the public okay. uh, because it's really the public that needs to buy in to whatever we're going to do about climate action. We already yeah. do a lot in Amherst, but we can all do a lot more. So. And there's another committee that you did which is very important, which is similar, right, to some town councilors and community members, and that's the CRC? Th no, actually CRC is all town councilors. It's all town councilors, right. okay. It's, and it, it does, and in fact, one of the other ad hoc committees that we're actually created just at the last meeting and will appoint at this meeting is a combination of councilors and citizens, right, other citizens, mm -hmm. non-councilors, uh, and that's the one to look at the percentage for the half percent for art bylaw. Uh -huh. This is a bylaw yeah. that was passed by town meeting, but then it ran into trouble at the state level yeah. because of the way a piece of the bylaw was configured. It financially is not feasible to do it the way it was proposed. Mm -hmm. So the whole bylaw is not, is not in effect at this point. So we've, we're now creating an ad hoc committee that will actually propose a new bylaw to replace that A one. new version of that. Right. Sticking with the basic idea, which is? It, well, there's two of them. One is the half percent on all the major capital buildings. And then there's also the other piece, and this is where it ran into some difficulty, was a half percent every time you do some kind of capital project over a certain amount of money, but then that money would be put someplace else, and then that money would be used for projects throughout the town. It leads to a very complicated confusing. set it's very confusing. of financial okay. maneuvers. Uh, but the basic principle here is we want art 
incorporated into public buildings, mm -hmm. and uh, this applies only to public buildings, not to private development. That's correct. Okay, and yeah. so it's it's about taking those two policies, integrating them, mm -hmm. and ending up with uh, a, a hopefully a, a good workable version right. for our for our community. Right. Right. And not a lot of communities have done percent for arts programs. That's correct. And so this is uh, you don't have a lot to go on. Uh, elsewhere, right. but it's a very important policy that's actually been implemented in many states yeah. for state uh, public construction. It has. So, and it has. we had it in Massachusetts at one time, mm -hmm. and it went away during one of the recessions. Oh, and there's been a effort for the last six or eight years or so now to bring it back. That's a good piece of history to know. Yeah, a good okay. piece. So that's that's yeah. terrific. Oh, any other committees? The other one is our town council goals, okay. and so starting with. Um, our retreat last February or so, we began to establish a set of goals for ourselves as a town council, mm -hmm. both immediate, ongoing, as well as one plus years beyond. And so, and those have really guided uh, and very much relate to each of our committees mm -hmm. and then relate to us being able to say, what have we accomplished? Mm -hmm. And we have a retreat coming up on the 21st of this month and we'll be revisiting those goals. Mm -hmm. And those goals then also play into the establishment of the town manager's goals for the coming year. Okay. So, so those will need to be integrated. Right. Fantastic. So the quick summary of all of that, and that was a bit dense, but I'm glad you did it because we have to learn the new structure of our government and, right. and what's happening. But basically you were focused on, uh, in this section, you were focused on creating the institutional structures that are necessary, the procedures and processes so that the public would understand the limits and charges and mission and right. capacity of all of these institutional uh, elements that form the, the nuts and bolts of how the work is going to get done. And then there were the rules. Mm -hmm and the processes of procedure. Right. And you got all that done in the first eight months, oh, but that's not yes. all you did. No, <laughs> thank heavens. It's not all you did because government isn't about, and, right. and running for office isn't just about sitting and, and trying to make organizational charts. Right. It's about improving people's lives. So right. let's switch gears. So what did you get done with all of that structure? Okay. Well, first of all, we do have the Energy and Climate Action Committee. Uh, we transferred the East Street School, which is a town-owned property, to the uh, Amherst Municipal Housing Trust for the purposes of ha affordable housing. Uh, we approved funding and opened the new temporary bridge on Station Road so that that road is now fully open and mm -hmm. actually it's a very well designed temporary bridge. It was and I frustrating think when it was closed, it but was. Yeah, I love that it's open again because I go through that part of town. As do many <laughs> other people. Uh, very, very nicely kind of picking up on some past work. Yeah. We were able to finally cut the ribbon on the opening of the Mill Street Bridge yeah. near Puffer's Pond and that also the parking has been redesigned around that. And so that road is also open. Two bridges in one year. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just the short-term rental option, adding the 3% to Airbnbs and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, did our own council appointments, a planning board and a zoning board of appeals, and then a number of council approvals of town manager appointments. Mm -hmm. uh, two of the most important, I think, and very different, and again, because of the charter, uh, two of those, one is the um, whole issue of the Board of License Commissioners, and they became extremely public as we went through the very unfortunate situation we had with one of the uh, newer the residents. Res uh, the restaurants. With Porter, yeah, right. Yeah. But they they stood there, they, I mean, they stood up, they did it, they acted fast. They did their job. And they, they did, did their it properly. Job. They yeah. did it with uh, transparency right. and uh, full public disclosure of what was going on. Right. and. Right. They served the town well by right. making sure, and it also was f fair for the other restaurants and other Absolutely. businesses in town. Absolutely. Uh, you can't have some follow the rules and the others right. skirt them. Right. And we're very lucky, and there, here's an example of where people who've been active in the past governments have also stepped forward in this new government arrangement. Mm -hmm. Doug Slaughter chairs that commission. 
So, and brings lots of experience from having done this through the select board. We hope the, to have Doug on in a few weeks, so. Good, good. Uh, the other one is the Resident Advisory Committee. And two names that are very familiar to the public, Jim Pistrang and Connie Kruger are members of that. And they're, they're the committee that helps the town manager uh, look at potential appointments to other committees. Right. And so then in addition to that, there's been a bunch of committees that appointments just didn't happen with. And so we're pretty much caught up, but yeah. it's still working on making sure those committees are And also are there was a out. considerable amount of work done during this eight month period in terms of upgrading the process and the application and promoting it yeah. um, with our community outreach officers and trying to get more people to participate, to apply so that we had a more diverse, um, uh, truly representative set of uh, applicants and appointments. So we're seeing an increase in applications. Uh, we're still judging whether or not we're really seeing an increase in diversity and what are the barriers to participation. Mm -hmm. And then there will be another complete look at the appointment process. Um, it's, we yeah. ran into some very serious concerns about how public it, sh it should be or shouldn't be, and whether that discourages or encourages people to apply. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that the OCA committee is looking at this fall. And, and another big accomplishment, of course, every year a legislature has to do a budget. Absolutely. And you guys did a budget. We you did a budget on time. No override. No override. Not a uh, lot of new investment because no. there wasn't a lot there. No. But some some good prioritization of where the right. dollars should go. Well, and approval of the uh, Community Preservation Act projects, mm -hmm. including the one on uh, the studio apartments on Route Nine. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, so that you know, those are just some of the kinds of things we we've dealt with issues like public way and the fact that we're water commissioners and a variety of sewer commissioners, things that people don't always necessarily think of when they think of the council. And uh, to go back just one second on uh, the CPA and Route 9 and all of that, um, uh, there was another development through this mm -hmm. process because it was a controversial project. And my recollection is the town council took a look at the process and said, you know, we probably could have done this better mm -hmm. in town, and so let's take a look at how we handle these types of proposals. Right. And you folks came up with a new process to try to, consistent with the charter's dictate right. of transparency and civic engagement, right. make sure that a process of that sort uh, was as open and more open than the last, right. uh, et cetera. Do you want to say anything more on well, that? Well, we did a little backtracking on that particular one, and mm -hmm. that was a four-hour forum that a, a citizen's participation of uh, some presentations by uh, people involved with the proposal for the project, some presentations involved uh, presented by people who are opposed to the project, and then just general public comment. But it was a four-hour uh, open session, and I think very healthy. It doesn't resolve everything. It doesn't make everybody happy. But we felt as a council, we really needed to step back and make sure the voices of the community were heard on this one before mm -hmm. we did the vote. Uh, we did go ahead and vote on that. Uh, we're still waiting for the uh, Valley CDC to submit their application. And at that point, there's another process for public input, as well as if they're approved than another process for public input. So it was review and revise. Review and revise. And not only on the substantive uh, elements of the proposal, but also on the process. Absolutely. Great. And so now in the remaining time, yep. we're going to have to go into our um, uh, uh, our quick, uh, the, oh god, there was a show with uh, uh, <laughs> lightning, the lightning round. Yeah, there we're you go. We're going into the lightning round. OK. What's so, coming up? Uh, well, we're launching into our uh, manner in which we're going to create a public discussion about the four big capital projects. Okay. And we're doing that. Uh, we've actually had a terrific meeting just last night. We have a model that can be used to really t 
bring out that discussion, talk about what people feel we can afford, what we need to do overrides on, what how much of a building can we really afford, and look at the four building the four building projects in one big picture. Mm -hmm. And it's a scary picture. So they're not going to be done in isolation. <laughs> right. Library schools, fire, and DPW. Right. Correct. Okay. Correct. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for discussion. Absolutely. You folks are going to do uh, forums and neighborhood meetings and a right. whole range right. of things to give people the opportunity to right. provide input about the nature of the projects. Mm -hmm. We very much like the way the, the school location. did the MSBA process and yeah. so we see ourselves doing a series of meetings in our districts and so forth Good. as well as bigger or larger meetings. Terrific. Okay? That's a big change from town meeting because although there were 240 or so members mm -hmm. who could communicate with their constituencies, um, they didn't organize public meetings and things of that nature. So this is uh, one of the other things that comes as a result of the new charter. Required district meetings. Right. And then a different attitude on the council about mm -hmm. making sure that there are ample opportunities. And you're going to mimic a good process that produced a, 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 uh, a supportable result. Right when we were dealing with the schools. Exactly, Got exactly. It. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, the, we, as you know, we're in the process of purchasing Hickory Ridge. Mm -hmm. We hope to complete that sometime early this fall. Uh, we will be... And what's the purpose of that land? Oh, uh, recreation, preservation of uh, the Fort River area and so forth. Just, it's beautiful land. Any of it to be constructed upon or all for recreation and the, conservation? Two, two of the pieces toward the very back are the hope is that we will lease those out for solar mm -hmm. and get money back because the solar is there. And then the front of the property where the clubhouse is, is really the only commercial property. There'll be a whole planning process around what we really think needs to happen. So that building's going to stand and be put for the to moment. some use? For the moment. That's it may it, everything from potential swing space while we do construction to any number of other possibilities and but maybe over time it might even be torn down or that piece of the property could even be sold comes off the tax rolls it uh, if you it, use it for commercial that part will stay on the tax rolls if it use it for commercial that part goes on the tax rolls mm -hmm. right now based on what we already get for hickory ridge even the two parcels for the solar will equal that amount of money got it so we're not losing anything by having the town okay. take it over so there's a business plan associated with the vision there's a vision a beginning of a vision of which there will be a business plan on it all right okay i think the taxpayers will like that a lot right <laughs> right so we also have to develop new budget guidelines for this year. Uh, we have to review our master plan, mm -hmm. which is another one of those public forums. And then on December 2nd, uh, Paul Bockelman and I, uh, by charter, have to provide a state of the town address, which we will do at the beginning of the council meeting on that date, which happens to be the anniversary of our being sworn in. Wow, okay, so, so literally one year, one year to the date. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, what can you say about uh, economic development in town as mm -hmm. you folks are standing up the uh, Community Resource Committee? Right. Which that's pretty much there is going to be in their jurisdiction. It, it does. It very much is in their jurisdiction, but it's very much in their jurisdiction working, working with the planning board. Uh, working with and hearing things like from the parking committee that just re unveiled their report recently, just last week. Um, so there's a variety of different things that feed into that, including the work that the town does and the hope for work that we would do in encouraging more economic development jointly with the university. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to see things like that happen so that we might create small businesses that become larger businesses mm -hmm. in the general area. It's, this is an area that you know is near and dear to my heart. Uh, we need to diversify our tax base and we need to do that by, doing, by bringing in more businesses that are friendly to the Am Amherst culture, if you will. Mm -hmm. Great. So other things that are running around your mind at this point? Yeah, we just completed the town manager's evaluation. Yeah. And we uh, will vote on Monday on his compensation package and offering him an extension of his contract 
to August 31st, 2023. Very good. And how long has he been on staff? He's I been, he's just completed three years. Three years. Yeah. And uh, he completed three years and um, so he did two under the old system and was having to work on the transition. Absolutely. That's pretty, that's pretty intense. And he took the job knowing the transition might happen. Might occur. Mm -hmm. And uh, has been terrific in guiding us through that transition. Great. So. What else? Anything oh boy. else? <laughs> Lots of things. Um, you know, we've been offered some land for uh, the DPW uh, to be sited on land that Amherst College has uh, graciously offered us. We've tried to learn from previous um, efforts, the studio apartments being one of them, uh, by having uh, people literally knocking on people's doors, people uh, meeting with people down on the Kiwanis Park, mm -hmm. uh, and then having two district meetings in District 2. Uh, it's not without controversy. Uh, nobody wants the kind of trucks and so forth that go with the DPW right next door to their house, no matter where you go in town. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at some point, we have to do it someplace because that building is older than you and I are ever even thought about. <laughs> it's over 100 years old. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Well, uh, sounds like you folks are busy, busy, busy. And um, uh, you had in your mind what you thought would be your required weekly schedule and <laughs> amount of time. How's what you're actually doing stacking up with what you had imagined? I estimate personally for me as president, I spend somewhere between 25 and 30 hours a week. So that's a really significant okay. part-time job. It is, but it hopefully will change after one year because it becomes more routine both for me and for the council. Mm -hmm. Uh, our council is a terrific council. They all pull their own weight and really step to the plate. So everybody's doing their jobs. Everybody's doing their jobs, mm -hmm. earning and, more than their $5,000 a year. <laughs> and uh, the final thing that I wanted to ask is, how have you been finding your uh, district meetings? Are people showing up? Are they engaging? Um, Are they bringing up the kinds of issues you would have thought? They vary by district, if mm -hmm. you will. For example, uh, district 1 has been actively meeting, but has another association in District 1. Yeah. District 3 has been much more, and District 5 have been much more innovative in terms of the kinds of things they've brought in for the district meetings in terms of resources, town staff, etc. cetera. Um, district 2, our meeting has, one, our very first meeting was just open, kind of what do people want to talk about? What Pat and I learned is they wanted to talk about parking. Mm -hmm. And then the other two district meetings we had were specifically focused on the Parking DPW. in the district or parking in town? Parking downtown. Downtown, wow. They don't live in the district, so they don't live downtown. So they want to know when they leave the district, how can they how park can downtown? How can they park? Well, right. and also, uh, uh, can they get on the bus so they That's, don't have to worry about downtown parking downtown? Because right. a lot of people want more public transportation in Absolutely. town. Absolutely. And on that note... Thank you so much for joining us and Thank for the you. good work that you and the council are doing. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you.